to the channel and my name is Manish Tiwari. So in this particular video, I'm going to talk about AWS interview questions, which are the part of DevOps interview questions. And in this particular video, I'm going to talk about their answers as well. So let's start with the basic questions of AWS, which you obviously encounter during your interview. And uh, these are the basics ones through which we as an interviewer or a different interviewer used to test you whether you have worked with the different AWS services or not. So these are the kind of your, uh, you can say the pointers kind of thing, which tells you that you have exactly worked with the, uh, the services or not, correct? You might read about the definition, you might know about the definition, but the single, single properties of the different AWS services can highlight whether you have really worked or not. So let's focus on the first question itself. That is what is user data in EC2? So as you can see from the answers it will, uh, as well, that user data is a kind of way, how can you automate your server, correct? So just suppose that you have to install some of the software on your server. And for that, what you have to do, you have to come to your EC2 instance, you have to launch it, you have to log in, in it, and then you have to run the certain commands to install your Jenkins, to install your Docker, to install Python, Git, any kind of software. To avoid those kind of manual command aggregation, what you can do, you can put the sales script, bash script in your user data, and that user data will run your script before your EC2 gets ready. So whenever your EC2 instance will become ready, it will have all those prerequisites done. Got it. So you can see the answer, user data allow automated configuration of EC2 instances at launch. Scripts or cloud init files can be used to install packages, set environment variables and configure services automatically before the instance becomes available. So with the help of user data, you can do the automation. Where will you find this uh, option in your EC2? This option will uh, you will find at the bottom when you are going to launch your EC2 instance. And the, uh, in the advanced section, you will see the option of user data that is optional. You can launch your EC2 instance without user data. And if you have to do automation kind of thing, you can use this user data while providing your EC2 instances. Let's move towards the second question of the AWS EC2. Explain the usage of EIP in EC2. What does EIP stands for? EIP stands for Elastic IP Address. When we say Elastic IP Address, we are talking about a permanent IP address, which can be assigned to your server. So generally, if you see your EC2 instances have this public IP address, private IP address, there are different properties of all these things. But whenever you stop your server, even if it's public EC2 instance, it's public IP address gets changed. And once again, if you restart, the new IP address will be assigned. What if your application is running on that particular EC2 machine and you cannot change the IP address every time, correct? You cannot tolerate that. So you need to assign a permanent IP address. So this is one of the properties in the EC2 where EIP, that means Elastic IP address will be assigned to you and that Elastic IP address can be associated with any of the server which is either running or stopped and that particular server will have a permanent static IP address whether you restart, stop EC2 instances. Till the time you do not terminate this EC2 instance, it will remain with that server. Once you terminate EC2 instance and this Elastic IP address is not used, try to release it because if the EIP stands in your AWS account, it will be charged. So as you can see, unused EIP are charged, so should be released when not in use. Correct. Let's go with the third question. How do we provide a static IP to AWS EC2 instance? It's similar to the second question. You allocate an elastic IP from AWS, then associate with your EC2 instance. This ensures the instance retain the same public IP address. Correct? Let's move towards the fourth question. What are the different types of EC2? So, as you might be aware, there are different classes, the different family of the EC2 machine, your general purpose EC2 instance class, then uh, there is a C type, that means compute optimized your instance classes. Then there is R family, that means your memory optimized instance classes. So according to your different use cases, whether you want comp compute optimized, whether you want memory optimized, or you want just want a general purpose uh, use case, correct? That means you just want to run your application. So based on your use case, there are different kind of EC2 instances which you can utilize. 
So moving towards the fifth question, what's the default route in the main route table? So if you get into this VPC, you see the option of route table in the left side, correct? So what is the default route table? So the default route table is 000. What does that mean? That means it's pointing to internet gateway for public subnets or NAT gateway, correct? So that is your uh, sorry default route uh, entry in your main route table. Let's move towards the sixth question. What's the use of VPC endpoint? So whenever you want to create a private communication between the different AWS resources, different AWS services, and that too without internet, you don't want to use internet, and even you want to keep your uh, communication private. So for that, you can use this VPC endpoint. The most popular use case is the gateway endpoint, as you can see uh, written here as well. That is used for connecting your EC2 to S3. That is the popular use case which you will face during the interview. Interviewer might ask that how can you establish the communication between EC2 to S3 and without using NAT, without using internet gateway. So VPC endpoint gives you the two kind of endpoint, gateway and interface, where you can use this gateway to establish the connection from EC2 to S3, correct? Right? And that is without your NAT, without any public IP. So next question, how do we ensure EC2 can access the internet but is not publicly accessible? So this question is related to, in, in related to your NAT. So the answer is, use a NAT gateway in a public subnet, update the private subnet route table to direct traffic to the NAT gateway, correct? So what does that mean? That means you have to create a NAT in public subnet, then route it to private subnet route table, and then whatever the request your private EC2 machine will make, that will go to the NAT, NAT is configured with your public subnet, that will go to the internet, and finally it's going to uh, establish the communication through the internet. So that's the your uh, seventh question. Let's talk about eighth question, what is target group? So the target group is a component of AWS load balancer, which routes your incoming request, incoming traffic to the registered targets, that means your server. Okay. So target group is nothing but, it's a group of EC2 instances, group of servers, on which you can route the tra traffic based on the different past, based on the different conditions using a specific protocol and port, correct. Let's move towards the ninth question. Define auto-scaling group and different policies. Auto-scaling group. This is one of the component of AWS EC2 instance where it ensures that a defined number of EC2 instances are running, like based on some uh, threshold, CPU utilization, memory utilization, you have, or the number of requests which are coming to your server. You have defined that five number of servers should run at this particular uh, threshold that 50% CPU utilization is there. So five number of servers should run. If there is 80% of CPU utilization, 10 number of CPU uh, EC2 instances should run. So auto scaling will manage those kind of desired state for you. Now moving towards the last question of this video, what are the different types of load balancer? So mainly there are two application load balancer which works on seventh layer and your network load balancer which works on layer 4. These both works, the application load balancer works on HTTP, HTTPS protocol, while NLB, network load balancer works on TCP, UDP protocol. So these are kind of your two load balancers and there is third one as well which is called as gateway type of load balancer that you will see that's the new one. So these are kind of load balancer you can uh, read more uh, in detail. So in this particular video, I wanted to talk about all these questions. I do have a number of questions listed over here. I will be talking about uh, going further. So these are the basic questions uh, in the AWS cloud. So let's meet in the next video till the time. Thank you and uh, keep watching the video and happy DevOps learning.